Do you know what's absolutely brilliant? The substance procedurals that come with it that you can use to texture with. They're so useful. They look amazing. Um, I use them all the time when I'm working with substance. But what if you want to use them outside of substance? You can't export them. I want to use them in Mari. I want to use them in the Maya Hypershade. I want to use them in Blender, maybe. I don't know. I don't understand Blender. But there's probably a use case for them in there as well. Well, unfortunately, it seems really difficult to export them. If I go right-click export resource, it exports it as a .sbar, whatever substances file is. What if I just want to get these as images for my texture library? You mean like this? Well, that's what this video is going to show you to do in under five minutes, hopefully. Um, it's super easy. It's super quick to export these out um, and get them into your texture library to use elsewhere. So let's do it. So what we're going to need to start this is an object which we can put into substance, put these textures on and bake out. So for that reason, we need the UVs to be the entire space of zero to one so that we can project a texture really easily, just pop it on and then bake it out. Um, I'm going to use a cube. You could use a plane. Um, I quite like using a cube just because you can see it that it's working on the different faces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all these faces and then I'm going to go to modify unitize and that will just set the UVs perfectly to zero to one. So we can check that by zooming in. Uh, if you use a plane, it doesn't matter, it does exactly the same thing. So I'm going to export this as an OBJ and then load this into Substance. So I'm inside of Substance and I'm just going to make a new project and I'm going to import this cube, which I've got here handily. I'm going to bring that and I'm not going to touch any of this. Literally doesn't matter. We just want this object as a way to bake. So I'm going to hit this. Um, bake was not the right word there. I meant export. For some reason, it's quite slow to open today. So I've opened this, great. And you can see I've got my cube here and the UVs are perfectly in the zero to one range, exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna make a new fill layer and I'm just gonna drop whichever procedural I wanna actually export as a texture onto this. I'm just gonna scroll down here. Um, don't have to worry about baking the object whatsoever. So inside of Substance now, they've got this really stupid system. It starts with a filter on, so you just have to unclick those two buttons and everything shows. So if we go down to Procedurals and let's work out which texture I wanna get into Mari or whatever other texturing package I want. Um, I'm gonna start with this Creases Soft because I rely on it so much. So I'm gonna use this, it's just a really cool texture. I'm gonna put it into my base color. I've just added a plain fill layer. I've not touched anything. All we wanna do is just get it into the base color. And now we're basically ready to go. As you can see, it's sat across this really well. It's tiling. This is why I like using a cube just because you can see that a little bit better that you've actually set it up correctly. So now all we need to do is export. So I'm gonna to go to File, Export Textures. Um, and I'm gonna make a template for this. I've got one that I already made earlier, but I'm gonna show you how I do this from scratch. So I'm gonna click here and go create new template. It's made one here. I'm gonna name this first of all, and I'm gonna call this substance um, procedurals. I can't spell procedurals, so that's probably wrong. You can see I've put an underscore first. That's because when you choose the um, template, uh, by default, everything's done in alphabetical order. So I like to just be able to have all my own templates hooked together. It's just a little tip there. So what I'm going to do is just make a new output for this and I'm going to make it gray because these maps are, there's no color data to them. If you're exporting some of the normal maps from Substance, you would need to make this RGB. But for now, this is going to do me perfectly. And I'm just going to drag and drop my base color, if I can find it, onto this. Great. And just put it in the gray and I'm just going to call this Substance Export. For now, again, the naming conventions are really don't matter in this. I'm going to set this all up inside of the Windows browser because it's just a bit easier. Um, and I'm going to change this to .tiff and I'm going to change this to 16-bit. And we're basically good to go now. So what I can do is go to output template, scroll all the way down to my substance procedurals. I'm going to let the file type be chosen by the template because I've just picked that. And for size, I'm going to select 4K for now. I could do 8K if I wanted, but 4K is more than enough. And I'm just going to export this to this folder that I'm already using here select that and now we should be good to go. So if I drag this folder across, we can see, et voila, we've got this here. Um, so what I could do is basically, I can rename this now the name of whatever it is. So it's creases soft, cannot spell today, I haven't had coffee yet. Um, so that's good to go. And now I can just put that in my texture library. The reason I do this inside of Windows is because I don't have to change the template every time. Um, it's a bit quicker, especially if I'm exporting a lot. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna drag and drop this directional one, which is another really useful one. And I can just go export textures, export that. And it's good to go. And it will take you like 20 minutes, but you'll have a texture library of all of Substance's amazing, amazing procedurals, which I can prove to you if I go to my Substance procedurals here. These are all the ones that I've used earlier. Um, they're fantastic, along with some I've made myself from Substance Designer. But yeah, I've just, the only annoying thing is you have to go and rename everything yourself. But honestly, it's bloody amazing because these textures are bloody amazing. And um, yeah, nothing can compare. So it's just a really great way to get these working inside of other texturing packages or inside of your Hypershade in Maya. Whatever you're doing with them, they're really, really useful. So that's a quick tip on how to export those. And I hope that helps. Take it easy. Bye.